This is Tomas and Suzanne Fernandez. We're here as an extension of Hope Do Arts. We're the founders, and we're also going to be telling you their story of how we met each other, how God brought us together and purposed our lives as a couple, our struggles of, with immigration to get Suzanne from Canada into the United States, and some of the neat touches that God has done with us, with our art and with our lives. So wow. we hope that you will join us as the episodes number themselves. You'll know where you are in the story and we'll be continuing to record these for a while. So Suzanne, how are you doing today? I'm good. Nice to be here. Beautiful day. <laughs> Is it cold or chilly up there in Canada yet? Has fall begun? Some days are a little colder than others, but today it's quite warm. It's a quite nice day today. Yeah. All right. Well, it's sweltering here in Central Virginia. Mm. So anyway, we wanted to talk about um, a little review of who we are individually, and then we're going to come together about how God brought us together. So um, I'll go first and just explain that I've been in fine art uh, doing sculpture and painting for well, since I was in my early 20s, and I'm 66 now, so it's been a few years, and I was a prodigal son story, and I left the faith that I grew up in. I had not really had an experience with the Lord, and I was not encouraged to seek him out through studying his word, and those things came along after I returned to him, and he rescued me and gave me a new life, and I'm very appreciative of that, and he repurposed my art life as well and showed me a vision, which we're going to share a picture of a little bit later. So one of the things we want to do in our series is we want to feature artwork and sort of tell the stories behind the artwork. He's okay. a master multimedia artist. That was a huge surprise to me that she has a big sculptural dimension to what she does. So she paints, sculpts, and combines the two. And I've been sort of headed in that same direction. So we had lots of common ground. We were very excited to meet one another. And uh, we're going to be sharing those images with you and the stories that go behind them. So Suzanne, why don't we tell us a little bit about your transition into professional painter, sculptor, multimedia person. Yes. Um, much like you, I've I started, uh, I actually think since I was my early childhood, it was a gift God had given me right from the get-go. Yeah. Um, with what I could see you could do with a, a line and turned it into a drawing. It was, it just lit me up with, wow. I've always loved to draw and, and uh, I think my parents really noticed the gifting and they just poured into my life with paints and um, so I, I really feel blessed that I was given this gift. It, it turned out to be a real comfort for me throughout my life. I, I just I, somehow I just always enjoyed doing it. And I just thank God for that. And like yourself, um, I was raised my life knowing the Lord. And I had that foundation built as a child. But I, too, became a prodigal and uh, strayed for a couple of years but the good news was was that because the Lord is never strays and he waits patiently for us and there's a set time I believe that right. he us back there's a way that we're brought back he'll cause circumstances to change so that we find our way back so I I'm just so grateful that I really I guess I the good news was, was that, you know, you can think, you know, God and you were raised a certain way and you, but there's more and we didn't know it. And we had to kind of, we were searching in our own ways, but the good news was that I, I had to really have an encounter that I knew God was truly real and it was meaningful. And it was, he more than got my attention. Like you said, he set the hook and he got my attention as I like to say, hook, line, and sinker, right? Like he yeah. got me and I wasn't going to ever let go. And there was nowhere else to go. So I was grateful. It was so, so important that it was real. It wasn't just wishy-washy or a, it had to be real. So, so you, like me, sort of got to the end of yourself. Big time. And, and uh, most of the people reach out to the Lord from the bottom 
and look up from the bottom of the well. Mm -hmm. And I certainly was that case. I, um, I've admitted that I lost about 12 years of my life uh, dabbling in the new age and mm. um, just being lost, trying to invent my own spirituality. So um, one of the stories with the artworks that we're going to show here in a moment is it's a great comfort to me that God can reach into the lives of people who have not established a relationship with him and begin to, to plow the ground and plant the seed and, as he did with me in this particular sculpture. So later, as I committed my life to the Lord, he appeared and gave, gave me a vision, which I'll go into more detail in a moment. Um, but I knew right away how to approach the construction of the vision because of this first piece called Forever's Invitation. Um, and that it just makes me feel like he was walking next to me the whole time. So I just want to put that out there as encouragement to those who are watching this or know somebody who needs to watch this creative and not sure what to do with your creativity and how it can honor the Lord and how it can expand the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. God has already planted seeds. He's demonstrated his love and his, his mercy already repeatedly throughout your life. So it's a matter of the veils like Paul are removed from our eyes so we can see right. that his love is steadfast. Yeah. So, well, let's talk about how we met because we both, um, I had come out of a, a tragic ending to a, a 26 year marriage. And I was left with, with kids and a house. And really, I, I couldn't even talk about it for the first few years. It was just upended me. And it was about the seventh year that I began to feel comfortable enough to reach out and look for other community. And this one idea I had was to reach out to a prophetic artist group on Facebook. I thought, well, if anything, I'm a prophetic artist. And so I searched them and I found a group on there and I was feeling bold and I put an image of mine or two up there on in the share and they review them. It's not an automatic thing. So they looked at the images and I was accepted into the community of people and uh, lo and behold, I got a couple of comments, but one of them in particular intrigued me and that came from you. So now you can tell us how you got there. Well, it was um, much like you. I, I, um, going back a ways before that moment, I just through, you know, failed relationships and and life, just coming to the conclusion that my way didn't work. No matter how hard I tried to do good or do this or do that, you when you really. It's a journey of really, once again, always just this refining of coming to the end of yourself and realizing that God has a better plan for your yeah. life. And right. until I was truly willing to humble myself and, and fully commit myself to the Lord. And that, that was a journey in itself. Like I did the same thing, the, that seven year is God's number of perfection. And I, for seven years, I was alone with the Lord, seeking God and on a path of just doing that. And then finally, I decided to um, devote this year to um, operating more in my gifting. And that was really important. So I had reached out to um, starting a, a, an art class in Guelph here. And that was fun. And, and there was homework with that. And then I had a an art studio and I was getting more serious and intentional and I had a, a, an environment where I can just devote to doing art and then I decided one day well, what about prophetic art maybe I could check check online and see if yeah. there's prophetic Christian art groups and sure enough there were and I found one and I decided to join and and I I just had a feeling like I had a, that gifting in my art there was sometimes I'd paint things and they'd come true or it was just a, a leading I had and, and I wasn't, I wanted to know more about it. So I joined and I got accepted and, and I really enjoyed for the most part reading and, and seeing what others were doing. Like, like 
women and men. It was just a, an honest group of Christian artists. And, and I, whenever I saw beautiful art, I'd have to give a comment. And I, I found it inspiring. And when I saw Tomas's artwork, I, of course, I had to respond, <laughs> say something. I was, it, it, it affected me. It was, it was beautiful art. And and then I'm very I, then I person, you know. Then I, then I responded to your response. That's right. So That's I good. shot a text back and you complimented the work and mm -hmm. thought it was inspired. And it was this big cross that I had built, which is called Crux Gloria. We'll see a picture of it in a moment. That's right. And uh, it's kind of my signature piece of work. My defining moment of an evolving uh, Christian artist, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I uh, was sent you a friend's request, and uh, lo and behold, you accepted that pretty quick. And I was like, oh boy, now what do I do? And then a message came back, are you up for chatting? And uh, <clears throat> I, I had never had a FaceTime chat before on Facebook or on any platform. So I was like, okay, but you have to tell me what I need to do here. So we friended one another on Messenger and got online with each other. And after two hours of talking about everything under the sun and our spiritual walk and how good God is, I hung up the phone. It was probably one or two in the morning. And it just was like, <laughs> Lord, what, what just happened? I wasn't looking. And it just blew me away, the depth of... of sort of empathy, sympathy, and perception that you, you came into the, my my world with. I was like, wow. That's all I could say to the Lord. I didn't sleep well that night. That's right. I remember that, too. We were like, we couldn't sleep. We couldn't eat. We were all, like, getting messed up. Remember? We were all like, oh. Yeah. We were Twitter-pated. We were kind of like, what's going on? And, and actually, can I just take over the next morning after that call? It was like I was going to walk the dogs and and I and I needed to know right away, like with God, is something really going on here? <laughs> I need to know, is this for real? Is there something to have hope about? Right. And and I uh, as soon as I I came into that prayer to the Lord, I dr I let it go. And then I just somehow just looked up. And when I looked up in the sky, there was confirmation immediately. The moment I dropped the prayer was that the answer was like right there. And what I saw in the sky was, it just completely reminded me and brought me to your painting. The one I saw, the first image that I commented on when we were on, on the group. Okay. This painting that I love. Could you show us a picture of that painting? Yeah, just give me a second here to... And I'll keep Over talking about what I saw about the painting. The painting looked like a star in the sky and it had streamers of, of like trails of, of, of smoke or like the white coming down from the, the painting, as you'll see in a minute. And it, it was just, I knew this was spot on. Like God was saying, yes. There's the painting. Real. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was like amazing. I was so excited. I had confirmation. Oh, you know what's going on here? What's that? Is I haven't shared my screen yet. So okay. that's what that's what has to happen here. Okay. Share screen. Mm -hmm. mm. There we go. There we go. There's the painting. Let me hit the little slideshow icon. There we go. Big cross. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's the painting. Yes, there's the painting. So you see those lovely yes. streamers of light. Right. This had an image. It's it's subtly in there, and this is part of what I do as an abstract artist. Is I give you suggestions to engage your imagination. Whereas my sculpture, you know right away that it's a horse or the cross or right. Dove. Well, there's if you look carefully, you can see the image of a dove in the center and light is just breaking forth from the heavens here mm. so it's a three foot by four foot canvas and it was a very exciting piece to, to work and and this is what we're sharing with everybody is what you saw first mm -hmm. 
So, and now I'm going to backtrack. To the cross. Uh, yeah, that was the second image I commented on. No, uh, I'm going backwards. Sorry. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to... All right, this is what I want to talk about first. This is oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. There we go. No, it's not letting me do it. Maybe we should just stick with the cross, no, or? There we go. Okay. All right, this piece, this is part of the story was how God is reaches into your life even when you don't know it. And this was the case here. This beautiful picture with the rainbow in it, this sculpture piece is called Forever's Invitation. So I was given as a gift two sheets of bulletproof quarter inch plate steel that were each four foot by eight foot. So they're big and they were heavy, probably weighed a couple hundred pounds a piece. And I chalked my own torso out on the steel and then cut it out with the torch. So as you can see, the figure that Sort of in the steel is reaching up mm -hmm. and the figure that's above that is the piece that came out of it which i animated into its position with a mm -hmm. sledgehammer and this is what where i got inspired by the title because this character is reaching down to help the person who's trapped down below mm -hmm. so this this is the cycle that god calls us to mm -hmm. Sometimes we're the person down below who needs to have the sense to reach up. And sometimes we're the person who has been freed mm -hmm. who has the obligation to reach down to help us. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, the, the hand that's reaching up from this bent over character is also reaching up and trying to reach into the heavens for his help. So this um, way of focusing your view through the form that's not there is how God spoke to me about the next commission. So the next piece uh, is no. It's back. Yeah. Hang on. Mm -hmm. There we go. This this actually has a much longer story on a separate video that's in the playlist. So anybody who's really being touched by this image, it's called Crux Gloria. You can see that text at the bottom of the photo. This is a 33 foot high cross. And as the story goes, I was asleep in a room in Western Loudoun County in a farmhouse when the presence of God came into the room. I don't know if it was Jesus himself or the Holy Spirit probably the Holy Spirit. Anyway, it woke me up. God's presence is so powerful that sleep doesn't even keep it away. And wow. Wow. downloading, to use a modern term, of his love kind of came in like a wave and it, it immobilized me. I couldn't lift a finger. It was like I was just heavy with weight. Wow. I was on my side and I was looking at this aura of his glory and I was like, Jesus, I knew right away who I was I was in the presence of. His love was just so powerful that it just immobilized me. I, when you were reading the scriptures about people having to be picked up like John Revelation because you lose all ability in the presence of God. He is the source of your strength. Wow. Um, he directed my vision outside the window as I was laying there. And in this yard that normally has no electrical lighting, it was a pasture, actually. I looked out and I saw a glowing cross. And then inside the, the glowing cross, the figure of Christ was like molten fire. It was like I had supernatural abilities to look into the center of the sun it was glowing it was alive it was powerful and all of a sudden i began to move out of my body into um in, and travel across 
the distance of the yard, which is probably like the length of a football field. And in, into his figure I went and it was crackling. I could hear sound, I could feel heat, but it didn't affect me. And I went into his figure and all of a sudden I experienced sin being burnt off of me. And I, I experienced a sense of freedom and, and light, lightness. It was like yeah. I didn't know that I was carrying around so much weight. Wow. And his love was just, it was like pulsing. It was just, it was like the energy of the sun was a simile for his love. Wow. And he just held me there. Hmm. And, um, then he, he took me back to my bedroom and merged me back into my shell of my body. And he said, I want you to get up and draw down what you saw. And I knew that if I was going to get up and move, that I would break contact. So I, um, I said, oh, Lord, I, I won't forget. <laughs> I was resisting the Lord. He's like, no, you have to get up and draw this down. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I did, and contact broke. And he said to me, my cross is a cross of light. And I've probably done five or six different versions of this concept. Um, there's some in North Carolina and West Virginia. There's one here in my studio. And I've done a couple up in Loudoun County. Mm -hmm. So it's had a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. I realized a lot of things that I didn't fully grasp at the moment. You know, for instance, I see the cross now as a doorway. It's a place that Jesus carved out an atonement for anyone who, who embraces the cross. Yeah. And, and goes through the cross and carries the cross with them in life. Mm -hmm. This is our doorway. Mm -hmm. We don't get to bring anything with us. No. The only thing that uh, I was inspired by a recent interview with a lady who had had a near-death experience with the Lord, and she talked about the only thing that we get to bring with us to heaven are the, the memories of the love that we exchanged here on earth. I thought that was very beautiful. It is. Because if we're in heaven, our sins have been forgiven and they're erased. Love is the greatest gift. It's what we carry in exactly. our Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, it took a couple of years for this to happen. There's more about the, the journey on the in the, the YouTube channel playlist. So please help yourself to that. But this was another image that you commented on. Yes. I felt like this was God's connection point for us yeah and i i was pretty battered and bruised emotionally so it's taken mm. an extra amount of time for me to build trust and mm -hmm. you've been great doing that and it's been a, a really just a blessed journey big time yeah so i just wanted our viewers and listeners to um kind of experience a little what happened to me and what happened to us through the cross. Mm -hmm. And before you go on, I, I just think that just keep the image there is, is once again, you know, the cross is a place where we surrender. We, we, we commit our way to the Lord. We know that we can't go through this in our own strength. And, and I, part of that journey of when I, was putting God first in my life. And I knew that was my path. I had come to the end of my strength, the end of my, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't want to do it my way, but I used to say, okay, God, not my way, but your will be done. And I did that for the longest time. And I think the beautiful thing about the Lord for me was that he didn't, he didn't really answer that prayer of mine. He, he says, no, um, he waited for my tr the true cry in my heart, and I had cried out to the Lord, and I said, "Lord, I'm lonely. I'm really, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I admitted it like to the Lord, and I said, I'm, I, if you think there's somebody in my life, then I'm ready to receive you. You know, you, you, 
you make a way. Like if there's somebody and you, you know, that would be good for me and I'd be good for them. And I said, you do it. And I just, I just let that prayer go. I just, if it was possible, I said, you make it happen. And I let it go. And, and what, when I let that prayer go, I just decide, okay, I'm going to just start focusing on all the things that make me happy, which was my art. And that's what led me to the prophetic art group. And this is how we started our journey of just communicating online, talking about art. And then eventually you did send me the invitation and I, and it was confirmed when I you know I committed it to prayer. So we thank, you know, I just thanking God for this journey because he was with us all the way through it. And yeah. uh, and then you sent me um, the friends request, which that was that was what kind of got us to know each other a little bit more beyond the group. We started to communicate, so that was great. All right. And it began to quickly build to exchanging the devotion time and prayer and sharing mm -hmm. each other's lives. And eventually, there was a trip that you took from Guelph down to Virginia, so we could meet one another. Yeah. And then I went back up on another occasion and uh, got to meet your family. And mm -hmm. you're, you're a mother of five adult children at this point. And I'm yeah. a father of four, so we're kind of like a Brady bunch. I know. I'll never forget the day my son goes, do you realize he's talking to you? Do you realize how many, how many children you're going to have? Do you remember that? I do. All right, here we are. We're back again. We took a little edit break and we're back this is one of the images from Suzanne so I'm going to let her talk about it it's called the angel of light mm -hmm. I'm sorry angel of life life yes uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here Suzanne okay well originally I had made a, a full card um, this was in a small size and each page of the card was completely filled from the cover to the inside of the insert. And then when you flip the card at the back, this was the last image on the back of the card. And this was a Valentine card I had made you for our first Valentine's. And um, I felt very led in the spirit to just, just, this just came out of me. I wasn't, it just was, I wasn't looking at anything. It was just something that just poured out. And so um, once again, it reminds me of the first picture, which is that forever invitation. There's an invitation here that everyone's invited to this, this path that leads to everlasting life. Um, and here we have an angel of life that is showing the light in the darkness that this, this is a path for everyone that can have new life, newness of life, a new life in Christ, um, that we can be born again like much like butterflies, they start out as caterpillars and they only know life as a caterpillar. And then one day they are transformed into a beautiful butterfly that can, you know, migrate and fly. And, and, and it's so such a spiritual example of what can happen to us as well, that before coming to the Lord, we, we just live this life that this is what we know. And all of a sudden, life can take on a whole new meaning when we come to the lord it, it we get transformed and uh, right there's a resurrection story because the, the, the caterpillars go into a cocoon and they do for all the practical appearances look like they've died it's a metamorphosis absolutely and yeah. we go through that the old nature our old understanding our old life dies to to its way and we we enter in through christ through his death and resurrection, we enter That's into right. it, right? New life. So, oh, that's so this, beautiful. Yeah, this was um, an inspired piece that just sh shows that light that we're to be a light. So, what valley. happened to this first Valentine that you sent me? Well, that was the thing. It was, it, I put so much love into this card. Of course, I was so in love and it was so exciting. And I did all this wonderful artwork and uh, packaged up a whole package full of goodies of your favorite treats and things and full of surprises and sure enough it never arrived it was the most meaningful part of the gift was the card and it was lost and through the customs they they lost it and i 
course, you, I just felt devastated about it. I was very upset. But at the same time, I, I couldn't let that just bring me to that low level and realizing, okay, that I, I took it as an offering, like the first fruits of, of my love and my offering. It was to the Lord. And uh, we found that on our journey many a times when we were doing things, there was the Lord was taking that first offering. So it's pretty, yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, you had a picture of it. And that was the good news. It wasn't completely lost. And I, I'm so grateful I took photographs of all these images that were in the card. So I was able to reproduce the image, which was great, which I did do. If you want to go on to the next yes. image, I reproduced it into a painting. It was developed. Um, I, I made changes. It was just developed as a painting. And I really liked how it did develop and the colors. And uh, it was loved so much by a dear friend of mine who's been collecting my artwork for, for about 30 years. She, she wanted to buy it. So it it's now belongs to uh, my girlfriend in Montreal. She lives in a, well, in a town called St. Gabriel, Quebec. And it's, she has it there. So. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I know she cherishes it. I saw when we were honeymooning and we went to visit her. So it's a beautiful piece. And one of another idea that came out of this was to create a line drawing that you could, because uh, you're a teacher of art, mm -hmm. that your students could um, color in with a variety of medium. They could be crayons or felt tips or watercolors. Mm -hmm. So um, this is an example of one of those pieces. That's right. I have a, a young student that I've been teaching since a very early age. She's um, she's doing exceptionally well as an artist. She's a very good learner. And uh, so she's attempted to, I love how she used all the multicolors in the wings and, and, um, and, you know, I have to train her how to use watercolors because they're a completely different medium, but this is fun as a nice template to offer um, people to do. And uh, I'm hoping that a lot of people would like to download this image and, and color it in and, and, and eventually send it back to me and I could um, perhaps um, do something with it in the future, a posting on, the, on my website or make some well, that, down the road. We'll that's see. a beautiful idea of sharing a coloring image. Um, this isn't the first time we've done this. We did a nativity scene That's last right. year. So I would encourage people to visit your website, which will be in the description box mm -hmm. for people to, to get to the address and, and look for this. We'll try to have it ready when we post the video. We'll have the artwork available. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we have one more example. It's similar, yeah. Right. There we go. And so it's been developed a little bit more. Um, it was the same painting, but it just got pushed a little bit more with the sky. And uh, it could still even be developed some more. But it's 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 what every everyone that will do this, it'll always come out different. And there's no right or wrong. And it's kind of interesting to see how people will make differences with it. And it, so it kind of evolves into different interpretations. It's, it's nice. Right. And how old is your student? She's, uh, I think, I think she's seven, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Seven years old. Yeah, you've done a great job. I'd like to put a little plug in for people who have uh, a desire to have some art education. That's one of the things that we're going to be offering, uh, Suzanne and I. Mm -hmm. So you can contact us on the website. We can do Zoom art classes. We don't have to be in the same building anymore. So and Suzanne's done some teaching of art. She did a whole series on Black History Month for a school, and that was just exceptional, making masks with the kids, yeah. all the way from little, little kids to high schoolers. It was very successful. So we have some examples of that on her website. That's right. So um, this is another work of yours. 
this was the card. This was the inside of the Valentine's card. And I love this image. Um, it's very poetic and, and it's it's from, from the book of Song of Solomon, or the Song of Songs. It's yes. we see the line of Judah. And if you I I I, I derived all these images from the Passion translation. I, it's a very rich and beautiful translation. Um, I just love it. Yeah, it's it's just you know, I'm a little biased because I love everything you do, but this this is just got the presence of God and it kind of, as a friend of mine used to say, the masterpiece has a piece of the master. Oh, so, God, it's, it's lovely of you to say that. It's so nice. I love the jewel inside the lamp yeah. and the, the transitions of the main into the, the couple. And do you just, notice? Do you notice how the it's almost like his body's been whipped, like Jesus was whipped on the cross? No, I that had not occurred to me, but I'm glad you pointed that out. It's there, Beautiful. the suffering that we suffer in love. There's, there's a we're we're called to be a living sacrifice, right? We that's right. We go through this life. There is suffering. Yeah. We, we've been waiting. Well, we met three years ago this September, and we've been involved in the immigration process for two and a half years of of our journey and yeah it has been a trial oh, and uh, all the forms we filled out and fees that we've paid and we're just waiting on their timetable to let us know That's that right. Suzanne can have a green card and come to the United States mm -hmm. so that'll be woven into our stories now yeah. so I don't know if there's another image here well, just a minute before you go on, I just want yeah. to, it's one of the fruits of the spirit that we have to endure long suffering and, and so, so that produces patience in us. So we want patience to have its perfect work. And so we learn to wait upon the Lord. It's, it's God's timing is perfect. It's trusting. And in the meantime, even if we suffer, he's with us in it. We're not alone. And he's strengthening us. He's, he's strengthening our faith. He's, there's always something good he's 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 drawing out of our trials and there is treasure in our trials and there's a lot of treasure in this field and um there's a sense of even though we're in this dark night or we're going through a long season that we have once again there's the lantern right it's, i didn't realize there's the lantern in this piece and the angels holding the lantern as well which is quite interesting um yeah. i just finally made that correlation but um we're together in this the lord is with us in this and we have that promise of we are going to be together we're going that's our hope that and we know we even have the eternal hope that we will be with him forever and eternity ultimately all of us and and that's his great love for us that he says he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him so so we just keep committing our way to him every day and trusting he's He's bringing us into um, a better promised land of our future and our eternal home eventually. So that's, yes, that's well said. And yeah. That sort of ties itself back to the cross and its presence is so mm -hmm. powerful that it just overwhelms us mm -hmm. as we come into the fullness of him. Yes. It's going to be quite something. He's going to be the source of all the light. He will be that's like right. the lantern and and the jewels are also representative that we are his precious jewels like we are the treasure he's ransomed from the darkness we become tried through the fires and the many afflictions and and all of a sudden he, he's pulling out the dross or he's 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 perfecting and polishing us that we shine right we're, we're like beautiful gems that we each have gifts and 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 we're a treasure in his heart. He he ultimately paid the biggest rent price for us. And and uh, so he wants us to live as beautiful children of uh, light and, and love. And and that we're showing um, his all those good qualities that he's blessed us to really have. That we have so much to give thanks for. They will know we are Christians by our love. That's right. Yes. That's right. Now, if somebody wanted to own uh, a rendition of this, could you replicate this to a certain degree where you 
Oh, okay. oh yeah, all of those things can be uh, just like the angel, as you can see from the original card. It may have transformed into, uh, you know, it may not be exact, but it can be very much, much the same. Is this this is the type of reminder re reflection that we need to interrupt our daily struggles with and remind right. ourselves that we are like the gemstones as you said it's a beautiful message and that's right one we don't get to hear too often so having a framed piece along these lines mm -hmm. would be good for the spirit yeah. and certainly a talking point if you have children as well mm -hmm have this in their room or at least mm -hmm. have it in the house so they could be aware of how God sees them. That's right. And there's, there's a lot of meditating you can do on this of God's faithfulness. I mean, I, the line is representative of the line of Judah, like great is our God, right? He's, he's so yes. mighty to save us and his promises are true. And it's just having that faith that he cares for us. And it's, there's a lot that you can draw from this image for yeah. sure. Yeah, you kind of have to get your mining axe and do a little digging, but the treasures are waiting to be discovered. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me see if there's another image beyond this, and I've kind of lost track. That's all right. Oh, this is... Uh, that this was... is one that I sent to you on That's Valentine's right. Day. That's right. So it, it was, I think it was entitled, Our Garden is Love. Mm -hmm. And one of your favorite creatures in creation are the robins and, of yeah. course, butterflies as well, but robins in particular. So I'd be sure, I'm sure to Especially. do those. Can we share a tiny bit about that? Like that was, it's not just a special creature that we love for the sake of just admiring it. This, there's depth to it. And, yes. and, and along my journey of walking with the Lord, it became very significant of God was showing me very intentionally how much he loved me through the image or the, of the Robin. And, and, and every time I see a Robin, many times I, I am so blessed. It's like confirmation. God is saying, you know. Yeah. I remember on one of our calls when I was in this, in the metalworking studio outside, all of a sudden I was, my whole building was surrounded by probably 10,000 robins. It was right on time in our conversation, and it was a powerful moment. It was. And, and you were just like, what is this? What It was like, I think, was, didn't you start seeing them before you even met me? Yeah, they, they had begun to flock into the farm. And, mm -hmm. But that particular day they, they zeroed in on me in the studio and I kid you not there must have been 10,000 of them there were everywhere we have cedar trees here next to the studio and pear trees and they were like ornaments in the trees you know, they were just on the ground looking for worms I think it was kind of around Valentine's Day and it was uh, you know that occasional spring-like teas that can come along and the, the ground thaws and the mm -hmm. worms are up and the birds are wow. up. So it was another huge sign. It was yes, it was. It was a major like, manifestation. Right. And and the Lord has blessed me many times with, with the robins in, in very interesting ways. Like This is so. another image that we might provide for free as a tracing that it will, will be inked and printed and then you can take watercolors to it or colored they make mm -hmm. a wonderful colored pencil it's what i use here that you put your colored pencil in and then you take a brush with a little bit of water and mm -hmm. go over your pencil work and it becomes a watercolor yes so this is such a such a special piece it's so full of love and life and it's just so nicely done with the, the the way the plants are moving and the hearts and the just all the lovely little creatures of the butterflies and the birds. It's so pretty. Thank you. I'm glad it's well received. Very meaningful. So I, I want to invite people to continue on the journey with us and we will be interjecting art and commentary and spiritual insights as, as what we feel the Lord calling us to do and to encourage people in their walk, especially 
if they're waiting to meet a significant other, that mm -hmm. God does answer prayers, you know, and uh, we would love for you to hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. So when you when we post something, that you'll be alerted to it. And uh, please hop over and look at the other videos that we have produced, um, sculptures and horses and yes. all kinds of things, paintings. And, mm -hmm. and we will continue to populate with new work. Suzanne has a bunch mm -hmm. of new paintings that she's working on. She's doing some portraits that are fantastic. And I'm getting ready for a show in Pittsburgh. So I've accumulated a lot of work. I've been painting this whole year for the show. So I'll be happy to, to share those. Actually, most of them are already on my website. So that will be in the drop down description mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we thank you and we bless yes. you and look forward to our next exchange. Thanks, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. We welcome your comments. We thank you for just joining us and and um, just have fun looking looking at around both of our sites. There should always be a link at the end where you can bridge over. And um, I'm also working on a lot of new pieces and, and we're just, it's a jet, we're constantly uploading new images and things. So it's, it's really wonderful to share and hear your comments and, and um, suggestions or whatever you, however you feel you'd like to reach out. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.